Welcome back again to my channel. Now that it is officially fall, I'm gonna decorate up here. So I'm gonna slowly bring stuff in. I'm gonna wait for the Halloween decorations until next week when it's actually October. But for now, we got a bunch of fall stuff. Anyway, for today's video, as the title says, I'm testing out a new tablet. And I really want to see how good is this compared to my Apple iPad. This tablet we are testing out today is called the Picasso Tab. Um, this is by the company Simbans. This tablet was sent to me for free by the company, so thank you very much. And I'm very excited to test it out today because I use an iPad currently, but in the past I've used five or six different drawing tablets. I've tested out a bunch, I've used a bunch thoroughly, and so I've had a little experience with each type of drawing tablet so I'm really excited to see what this one's all about we're gonna go into all the details and we're gonna see what we can create with this versus my iPad also the company nicely sent me over an extra one so this one is brand new and it's going to be going to a lucky subscriber this giveaway is open to everybody this one's gonna be international as well as domestic so if you'd like to learn how you can have a chance to win this tablet for free Keep watching until the end of the video and uh, you might just find out. I'm really excited to start unboxing the tablet, so let's just get right into it. Okay, so right on top they give us a glove. These are great for going right on the side of your hand here. They prevent you from smudging the screen as well as they keep your hand from interfering with the pen at all. And then we've got the manual. No, I'm just kidding, but for real, the manual. <laughs> On the side, I'm gonna guess this is where the charger would be. Think out the box, just, okay, <laughs> there we go. So yeah, just as I thought, here's the cable. There's some other adapters in there. And then we've got the pen. I'm not seeing any charging port. There is a spare battery in here, so I'm going to guess that this pen is battery operated. Then it looks like we've got a case here. Wow, that's actually pretty nice because I've never had a tablet come with its own case. Normally I have to buy one. And then the main event. Okay. Oh, that's pretty meta. This looks to be about 10 inches by seven if I had to guess. That's a pretty good size for a tablet. Not too big, not too small. So I'm gonna put this into the case and we're just gonna get right into drawing with it because I'm excited to test this thing out. So this stand is kind of awkward because it does not actually let me stand it up properly at an angle where I would be comfortable drawing. I'm gonna lean it up against something just so I have an easier time. I wanna transfer my sketch over to the tablet. Camera quality isn't the best from what I'm seeing off the bat, but I'm not really here for pictures. I'm just here for the drawing. Anyway, I downloaded Ibis Paint, Ibis Paint, I don't really know how to say it. I've never used this program before because I use Procreate typically and I used to use Medibang Paint. So I'm new to Ibis Paint. So I'm gonna click import picture. Okay, so now my drawing is here. So I'm just gonna try out some different brush strokes. Whoa, what is this? But from what it looks like, I've got quite a selection here. Ooh, what is this? Whoa, okay. So with a lot of pressure, it's nice crisp line, and then I can lighten the pressure to make it lighter. Ooh, I like that. Okay, so this will be, I guess, my main outlining uh, drawing brush. Yep, uh, I mean, these are all pretty much as expected, so I just wanted to test out the software, but it does seem pretty straightforward. With any program, you just have to get used to it, but Straight off the bat for a free software that comes with this, it seems pretty nice. I really wanna test out this pen on this tablet and how easy it is to use, so let's just get right into that. I know this tablet came with a glove, but I'm not, I don't really wanna really use a glove right now. And with digital art in general, it's always important to zoom out and zoom back into your drawing to make sure that everything looks okay because it's very easy to think everything looks okay really up close. And then once you zoom out, you're like, wait a minute, none of those proportions look right. So I think for the purpose of this drawing, since it's directly head on, I'm going to copy and paste this eye. And that is way too much to that side. So I'm gonna line a little bit more and I'll talk to you guys in a sec. 
So something I'm having trouble with here is just the fact that some of my lines, I don't know if it's just my hand or it's the app itself because I, like I said, I haven't used Ibis Paint before. So I don't know if it's this tablet, but some of my lines are a little shaky and I don't know why. Um, I'm thinking that maybe me not wearing a glove is throwing off the sensitivity on the screen. So basically it just goes on your last two fingers there. And it's just to prevent your hand from either making fingerprints on the screen or smudges and also to help it glide along and not mess with the pen. Oh yeah, actually, wait, that is like actually 10 times better. It was messing up a lot more when I had no glove. Okay, so I take back what I said because I think it was just me screwing myself over. This is best used with a glove. I'm gonna say that. So I'm just gonna color it a little messy. For skin, I don't normally make it very clean. I just make a blob of where the face is gonna be because then I can go over it on other layers for the other colors. I'm not gonna go too hard on the shading right now. Ooh, what did I do? Uh, because I definitely wanna leave space for some of the other colors. Nico has green on her face and her skin in general. She's got some green markings. So I'm gonna leave some space for that. And this is a clipping layer right here. If you don't know, clipping layer makes it so that I can draw anywhere and it'll just go onto the layer beneath. So now I wanna talk about some of what I think are the pros and cons about this tablet. I'm gonna start with the pros and move on to the cons, so let's just get into it. The first pro is definitely the cost. I rate this out of five, I rate it a five. Um, this tablet costs about $220 on American Amazon. And that is extremely cheap, in my opinion, for a tablet that comes with a screen. Most tablets that I've used in the past have just been the black, uh, black tablet that you plug into your computer with all these wires and you have to plug it into an outlet as well. And that doesn't have a screen, you just have to look up at your computer. Um, and the ones I have tried with a screen have been at least $400 and they have been really bulky and again all the wires so for $220 it's a really good tablet the next thing I want to touch on is the no pun intended touch <laughs> sensitivity uh, I'd rate this a four out of five it's not perfect but it is definitely pretty smooth the tablet picks up on your pen pretty well and I was having those issues with the shaky lines at first, but once I put the glove on, it didn't really happen anymore. And so I think that was just a user error on my part. So keep that in mind, but overall I felt that everything felt pretty good when using it. Portability, five out of five. There are no wires with this one. It is just a regular tablet that you can take on the go. Super easy to bring with you anywhere and it's not too big. So I really like that. I always hated all of the wires and how big my other tablet was. Every time I wanted to set it up, it was just such a hassle. And so I really like tablets that are super portable like this and they're just a freestanding piece of technology and they don't need to be plugged into anything to work. And then I also wanna talk about the ease of use. This tablet is very easy to set up. Five out of five, straight out of the box, I turn it on and it runs on Android. So you can double this tablet as your drawing tablet, but also a normal tablet if you just wanted to play games on it, browse the internet, all that jazz. Um, you can definitely use it for both. That I, I definitely appreciate that, you know, a lot of the other tablets that I've owned in the past, they're just a tablet. So it's nice that the this one multitasks, because like I said, it is a freestanding piece of technology, therefore it can be its own thing. You don't have to use it just as a tablet, you can use it for whatever you want. So that is definitely a plus. So all these pros I definitely think make this tablet super worth it, but obviously nothing is perfect. So there are some cons that I'd like to touch on. The first thing I'd like to talk about is the glass. The glass is a bit thick on this tablet, which when I say the glass, I mean the screen itself. Um, and the way the screen is, screens are made in general is that there's layers of glass. So the thinner that the glass is, the more it looks like to you that your pencil or your pen, whatever your tablet pen, whatever you're using is closer to what you're drawing being, you know, directly on the screen. So the glass here is a little bit thick. So when you're looking at it while you're drawing, it does not look like your pen is exactly touching what you're drawing. It is slightly off. So that is definitely something to get used to. It's not a big deal, but 
I mean, it can be annoying for some people, but honestly, that didn't really bother me too much. I created this piece for this video and I did it just fine. It didn't really bother me. So like I said, just something to point out. And then another thing that I wasn't too fond of that I mentioned before is the case itself. I feel like this is minor because you can always replace the case. I didn't even know this was going to come with the case. It just, it did in the box. So I guess it's a free plus. Most tablets don't come with anything. You know, if you don't like the case, you don't have to use it. You could always buy a different one. But yeah, I didn't really like that. It couldn't be set up at an angle that I prop it up at an angle where I felt comfortable drawing. Um, I like to do that with my iPad. So it's just something I'm used to personally. And I wish that this one had that ability, but for now I just propped it up against something. And then this last one could be a pro or a con, honestly. Um, take it how you will. But just wanna point out that the pen is battery operated. So it is not a pen that you need to charge. Uh, so you don't have to worry about charging it, but you also do have to worry about changing the battery. So I'm, I don't know how long the battery on this pen specifically lasts. I'm guessing it's going to last quite a while. I've used pens with the battery in the past and they've lasted a pretty long time. So take it as you will. So the next thing that I wanna do now that I've gotten some of the other shading done is I'm gonna take her hair and Nico's hair toward the bottom here is pink and fades up. I made a layer here that I'm going to change what type it is. So I'm gonna take the pink that I want first, which will be like about that color. I'm going to take my airbrush and then I'm going to change the layer properties a bit to see what they look like under different choices. I like hard light, hard light looks good. So yeah, that's how I get that nice little fade toward the bottom of her hair. Now let's keep shading. Overall, I really did enjoy using this tablet. And I know I keep going back to the price and saying, oh, for the price, it's really good. But for the price, it's really good. Um, I didn't expect to like it this much. And I definitely think that this tablet would be great for somebody who wants to get into digital artwork. And I've said this before about other tablets that I've tried out, like, oh, this tablet's great for beginners. But I would say out of all the tablets I've tried, this one is definitely the best for beginners just because of the fact that it's a cheaper cost and you can draw directly on the screen, which I think is 10 times better than tablets where you can't do that. Like I said, I've used both and I've used the bulky ones with the screen. I've used my iPad. I've used the ones without the screen at all, large and small. I've used a lot of tablets and this is one of my favorites for beginners, I think. If I was just starting out and I wanted a good tablet to start using, to get into digital artwork. I definitely think that this Picasso tab would be great for that. So I would put it on my recommendation list. I don't like to promote things on my channel that I don't feel confident about or I don't like. So I definitely do like this product. And I think that anybody who just wants to get into digital artwork or somebody who wants to try out a tablet with a screen, maybe they wanna move from having tablets without screens and they wanna move over to this type, this is a good starting tablet. It's not too expensive and it definitely works pretty well and it can multitask as a freestanding tablet to be used for the internet, blah, 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 whatever you want. So that is my two cents on this tablet. And now on to my final thoughts. So guys, that was my review of the Picasso tab. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below, but you guys know what I think of it. Um, I, I really, really was pleasantly surprised by this tablet, especially for the price of only $220 for a freestanding tablet that has drawing capabilities. And I would definitely recommend it, like I said, to anybody who's either starting out and wants a tablet to practice on, or somebody who just wants to move over from a tablet that doesn't have a screen and they want one that does. Where was this product when I was 15? <laughs> anyway, as always, I have all of my links in the description box below. I have the link to my online shop, which is now my new Shopify storefront. So if you'd like to go check that out, the link is below and I have all of my stuff that was in my Etsy store is now in my new online shop. Etsy is still open, but the new online shop looks so much cuter and it's all organized and it's pink and just go look at it. Okay, go look at that. My Dangling Darlings Kickstarter is also ending in a few days. There's only three days left as of today. It ends on the 30th at 4 p.m. Eastern time. So go check that out. We already have six of the designs unlocked. We're getting close to the next ones. So 
please go help support that cause because I really want to unlock as many as I can. And then finally, I have a link to my Instagram page where you can follow me to find all of the artwork and things that I don't always post here on the channel and day-to-day -day things. So as promised, if you'd like to learn how to win this tablet, a link is in the description below. You can enter similar to the ways you can enter in my previous giveaways where it gives you the option to do a bunch of different tasks such as follow me on Instagram or subscribe here on YouTube. So there's gonna be a bunch of different things that you can do to get a number of entries slash tickets, whatever you wanna call them. Uh, you don't have to do all of them. You can do as many or as little as you like. Go check that out. All of the information is in the link in the description box below. Good luck to everybody. This giveaway will end October 13th, which is a Sunday at midnight Eastern time. So you have a little over two weeks to join. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I will see you all in my next video next Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Have a beautiful fall day. Bye-bye.